A major ecological area defined by its climate is called a biome. We will be focusing on the succulent karoo, fanbos, and forest biomes found in the Western Cape, which have been highlighted in the image shown. Um, on the slopes of Table Mountain lies the forest biome. The biome is humid as it receives a thousand millimeters of rain a year and is warm in summer and cool in winter. It contains tall trees such as the yellowwood and kirbworm, which block out most of the sunlight. Chlorophyll rich shrubs can also be found on the forest floor in the rich loamy soil, try to get as much sun as possible. Forests are necessary because they recycle carbon dioxide into oxygen and provide animals with habitats. However, they are threatened by deforestation and illegal barking. The Fanbos biome's climate consists of evergreen trees and shrubs, well adapted to the long dry summers, 600 millimeters of rainfall and nutrient poor soils. They are grouped into four main families. The Proteaceae family contains plants with large, bright flowers, which are pollinated by bees and birds. It also has oblong, flat, hard, possibly hairy leaves that grow on tall, woody stems. The hair traps water to reduce transpiration. The Restionaceae family is wind-pollinated and has long, flexible stems, small brown flowers, and no obvious leaves or small bracts. The Ericaceae family has small needle-shaped leaves, which are rolled to reduce transpiration. The flowers are bright and tubular or bell-shaped, which are pollinated by small birds and ants. The Rutaceae family has small oval-shaped leaves, which shade each other from the sun. The leaves have visible oil glands, which repel insects and reduce transpiration. Food pyramids are food chains which illustrate energy movement through the various trophic levels. Each level is smaller than the previous one because energy is lost through excretion, heat regulation and other activities. An example from Kirsten Bosch would be the following. The sun provides energy to the producer such as the bush tickberry which creates energy through photosynthesis. The plant is eaten by the herbivorous primary consumer, the monkey beetle which in turn is eaten by a secondary consumer, such as the Cape Robin Chat, and the tertiary consumer, the African goshawk. When the goshawk dies, along with all other organisms, its body is decomposed by the decomposers to provide nutrients for plants. Humans have impacted the Fainbos biome in various ways. Urban development, urbanization, commercial farming, and illegal picking have decreased the amount of naturally occurring fenbos, as well as the introduction of invasive alien plants and animals which disrupt ecosystems. This is detrimental to the fenbos ecosystem because if the number of producers in the food chain decrease, the primary consumer numbers also decrease because there is less to eat for the primary consumer. This chain reaction disrupts the whole. The succulent karoo biome is quite a harsh biome with temperatures ranging from freezing cold to intense heat and only 200 millimeters of rain falls per year. Many plants have fleshy leaves to store water. For a plant to survive in this biome, it has to be well adapted, like the plant we have designed, which looks like a standard Karoo flower until we go under the soil. It is bright pink flowers which are necessary for the attraction of pollinators and shade the vertical leaves at noon. The waxy, succulent leaves retain water and reduce transpiration and are almost white, which reflect radiation. An absorbent bulb stores water when it is warm, and because it is underground, it regulates the plant's temperature. Due to the human activity, such as the clearing of vegetation to make way for urban development, the increase in pollution and other factors such discussed earlier, some species have become extinct. By continuing this activity, we increase the rate of extinction of plants. Not only does this disrupt food change, but also has an effect on climate change and decreasing biodiversity. But this can be slowed by planting and preserving vegetation in the wild where possible, reducing the changes we make to the environment, reducing climate change, urban migration, and a general appreciation for our country's natural environment.